inside. Here's one little chair for one of you, a bigger chair for two more to curl up in. For someone who likes to rock, a rocking chair in the middle. Okay. Now, look up. Way up. And I'll call Rusty. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Looney Dooney time with Maple Sugar and Crepe Suzette. And today we're so thrilled that the friendly giant and Rusty, and Rusty. Hi, Rusty. Hello, Rusty. <laughs> invited us to read a very special children's story. Yes. And it's even based on a true story. It's based on a true story. So, Rusty, can you go in the book bag and get us the oh, book? On my way to get it. Hang on. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Rusty. Well, for all you boys and girls, the name of the book that we're reading today is Donald Drains the Swamp. It's a great book. It's a great book. And we shall proceed. A long, long time ago, there was a kingdom where everyone lived in caves. And they, so they called them cavemen. <laughs> but the king of all the cavemen went to live in a white castle in the middle of a swamp far, far away. So because he never saw or talked to the people he ruled, he forgot about all of them. And the people were sad. Among them lived a famous caveman named Donald. Donald loved to build caves. In fact, everyone wanted a cave built by Donald. One day, a group of people came to Donald. They were very upset. Come in, Donald said. Have a seat. What's on your mind? The king has forgotten all about us, they said. Donald nodded. I've noticed. We tried to talk to the king, but creatures who live in the swamp take up all his time. We try to get his attention, but they always stop us. Would you, like, would you talk to the king and ask him to help us? I can try, Donald said. <laughs> but you know you'll never get past the swamp creatures. They're slippery and scaly and slimy. Oh, I think I can handle them, Donald said. Maybe I'll wear gloves. Hmm. So, the next day, Donald traveled to the edge of the swamp. The first swamp creature he met was a Lobbyosaurus. Hello, Donald said. Hello, said the Lobbyosaurus. <clears throat> I need to speak to the king, said Donald. The people who rules over need his help. It doesn't work that way, said the Lobbyosaurus. The king only helps those of us who live in the swamp. That's the way it's always been. Would you like to live in the swamp? Maybe I can arrange something. <laughs> no thanks, said Donald. I don't care for the swamp. How rude, said the Lobbyosaurus. You should be more diplomatic. I'm very sorry, said Donald. I don't like you much either. <laughs> Donald then tried speaking to the other swamp creatures, but they were all the same. Sad. Sad. <laughs> Donald went back to see his friends. I'm sorry, said Donald, Donald said, but it's even worse than I thought. What do you mean, everyone asked. I mean, we're going to have to get drastic, he said. How drastic? Donald looked them in the eyes. We've got to drain the swamp, he said. <gasps> Everyone gasped. <gasps> you shouldn't say that, someone said. Yes, said another. The swamp creatures might get angry. Donald smiled. <laughs> <laughs> You've all been angry for a long time. Maybe it's their turn. But some of the people didn't believe he could do it. No one can sw drain the swamp, they said. It's impossible. A lot of the cavemen thought Donald was crazy, and they walked away muttering. 
You shouldn't have said that, said Donald. When someone tells me something's impossible, I won't stop until it's done. <laughs> but others stuck around. Go, Donald, go, they said. You can do it. You can drain the swamp. Drain the swamp. But how would he do it? No one could figure out how. But Donald knew how. He's done many things like this before. <coughs> it's simple, he said. We just need to make a way for the swamp water to escape. We'll dig a trench. It will be the best, biggest trench you've ever seen. It'll be huge. And we'll even come in below budget. budget. <laughs> <laughs> so the next day, Donald went to the edge of the swamp. He put down his club and picked up a shovel and began to dig. When all the swamp creatures saw him, they were furious. What do you think you're doing, they demanded. Are you crazy? <laughs> Donald smiled. I'm digging a trench. It'll be the best, biggest trench you've ever seen. And it'll drain the swamp. You're mean, they said. We need this swamp. Where will we live? I can build you a nice cave where I live. <laughs> Lots of us live there, he said. Eck, they said. We can't stand the people who live outside the swamp. They're uneducated. They're uncultured. They're deplorable. But Donald wasn't listening. He knew he had a job to do, and he just kept digging. Then he noticed something he'd never seen before. The green color of the swamp water looked strange. It wasn't a normal swamp color at all. It was the color of money. Ooh, in fact, it was money. This whole swamp was filled with money, as far as the eye could see. Now Donald knew why all the swamp creatures liked the swamp. Lived there. Yeah, that's why they lived there. Then Donald saw something huge out of the corner of his eye. It was the biggest swamp creature of them all. It was a monster called the George Osaurus. Now you've really done it, the swamp creatures shouted. You've made the Georgiosaurus mad. Not as mad as you made us, came a shout. Donald turned to see all the people who lived outside the swamp. They'd come to help. They were all armed with shovels. Drain the swamp, they shouted. Drain the swamp. Suddenly, they were all digging alongside Donald. Because there were so many of them, the trench was dug quickly. And in a moment, the swamp water began to drain. The swamp creatures couldn't believe their eyes. They began to shriek in horror. Then they ran toward the trench. But they didn't stop. They just kept going, chasing the money flowing out of the swamp. <laughs> <laughs> Even the king chased the money. And the Georgiosaurus, too. <laughs> but the money flowed away so fast and so far that all those chasing it were never, ever seen again. All the people cheered. Yay! Once the swamp was drained, everything looked different. It was beautiful. Flowers bloomed and trees grew. But after all that, the people still couldn't talk to the king. What was the point of all they had done? Then a little girl had an idea. What if Donald were our new king? She asked. Donald, everyone shouted. Would you like to be our new king? 
and live in the castle and let us talk to you when we have a problem? You don't need a king, Donald said. You're free now. A king orders his people around, but whoever leads a free people has to take his orders from them. You mean like a president? Sure. And if that's what you're looking for, I guess I'm your caveman. Everyone cheered. The people gave Donald a special outfit that represented their newfound freedom. So Donald and his family went to live in the castle. He did some remodeling, but he kept it under, under budget. budget. <laughs> And the people lived happily ever after. Vaguely. Vaguely. <laughs> so, boys and girls, that is our story of Donald. Did you like that? What about you, Rusty? I loved it. It was wonderful. <laughs> Yay! A little off of our, our normal... Uh, yes. yes. Well, we'd Re like to thank the but Friendly Giant for inviting thank us. Thank you, Friendly what Giant. What an honor. <laughs> And until we see you again, keep your stick on the ice, eh? Doodaloo. God bless.